Um, so uh, thank you so much. Uh, I think I mentioned earlier, my name is Tristana Martin Rubio and I'm the coordinator at Engage and I'll be your moderator for this afternoon event. I am joined today by the director of Engage, Karen Lee, who in just a few moments will speak to the significance of the International Day of Older Persons and say a few words about the scope and purpose of this event. I'm also joined by our four panelists who I will learn, introduce shortly and with whom we have the privilege of sharing this floor. A few words about the center, just for those who are uh, less familiar. The center is an interdisciplinary center. We have 35 faculty members who collect, whose collective expertise spans all of our academic faculties, from engineering to arts and sciences, business, fine arts. Engage brings together researchers, students, and community partners who are committed to advancing the study of aging in socially relevant ways. We do research that is interdisciplinary, which means that we promote an understanding of aging as a biological and a physical phenomenon that is nevertheless structurally situated in social, cultural, and institutional environments. We also do research that is participatory and collaborative, which just means that we work to meaningfully integrate and strengthen the perspectives, lived experiences, and diverse trajectories of older adults into our research mandate and into our activities. So I'll now pass the floor to Dr. Karen Lee, who will uh, say a few words. Thanks, Tristana, and welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today to celebrate the International Day of the Older Person. Um, as Tristana mentioned, my name is Dr. Karen Lee. I'm the Interim Director of Engage, Concordia's Center for Research on Aging. Thank you all to the panelists for accepting our invitation, first and foremost, uh, and to contribute your expertise in today's important discussion. And thank you to the audience members for your presence and your participation and to the Engage Center for organizing this event and a special mention to Tristana for orchestrating all of this. So October 1st today is the International Day of the Older Person, as you know. It's a day uh, that was declared on December 14th, 1990 by the United Nations General Assembly to celebrate the many important contributions that older adults make and to bring attention to the specific issues that affect them from care and social support to ageism, abuse and victimization, health and well-being, housing, poverty and income, social isolation, and the effects of extreme climate change. In particular, here in Canada, our population is aging. Older adults aged 65 and above are expected to represent close to 25% of the overall population by the year 2036. And within this scenario, Quebec has one of the fastest growing populations over the age of 65. So today's event marks an opportunity to bring special attention to the status of older adults in Quebec from a community-based perspective. We're so fortunate today to have four panelists to speak with us on this theme. So in order of presentation, we'll have Mr. Philippe Poirier Monet of FADOC, Mr. Enoji M. Zilikazi, who's the past president of the Council for Black Aging Montreal and currently an engaged governing board member. We have Ms. Ruth Pelletier of Seniors Action Quebec and currently serving as um, a member of the Engage Advisory Board. And finally, Ms. Yvonne Sam, who is a member of the board of the Council for Black Aging in Montreal. So each panelist uh, will be introduced in more detail uh, shortly. And each, each person will bring their professional and personal insights and narratives to bear on the heterogeneous needs, interests, and contributions of older adults in Quebec and um, contributions they make to their own communities and to society, to the specific systematic and attitudinal challenges they may face, and to explore the unique qualities and resources older adults can bring to social justice causes and solidarity building practices. So in this way, the panel discussion aims to both recognize the challenges faced by older adults posed to them uh, by limitations on their autonomy and well-being, 
but importantly also to recognize older adults as experts in their own knowledge and social contributors to public and community health. Thank you again for joining us. I very much look forward to hearing the conversation that will follow. And so now I'll turn the mic over to Tristana who will introduce our first panelist. Thank you. Thank you so much, Karen. Um, right before we introduce the first panelist, I just want to take a few moments to um, say a few words about how this webinar will go and how, as members of the audience, you can participate. Um, well, in just a few minutes, we'll start with each of the panel presentations. There are four. Each panelist will present their work and speak for about 12 minutes. Following their presentations, we'll open up the second half of this event to the floor for questions from the audience and discussion among the panelists. We invite you and encourage you to submit your questions, your comments, any reflections you have, anything that comes to mind in the chat function at the bottom of your screen. Please feel encouraged to submit those questions and comments as they come up for you and at any point during the course of the event. And we also encourage you to use social media beyond the Zoom webinar. And you can do that by um, following us on Twitter or tweeting at us at engage underscore CU. And so finally, this talk, as you may have noticed, is being recorded and the recording will be archived on the Concordia University uh, YouTube channel. The recording will only include footage of panelists, the director and myself speaking, and any questions that you have um, that you drop into the chat box will remain anonymous. So with that, it is uh, my pleasure to introduce our first panelist, Philippe Poiré. Let me move spotlight. Philippe poiré monet has a BA in economics and politics from the University of Montreal. He's worked at the Federation of Quebec University students, and um, he currently is, uh, he's currently, Mr. Mr. poiré monet is currently the collective rights advisor for the for FEDUC, Fédération de l'âge de du Québec, the largest organization in Canada serving older adults. He is responsible for government relations and public affairs of the body. The floor is yours. Thank you, Tristana. Uh, so, uh, uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, the organization for this invitation. Uh, it's always a pleasure to talk about the, the situation of senior in Quebec. So, uh, just briefly, I present the Raison FADOC. The, the Raison FADOC is the largest senior network in Canada with more than half a million members. We bring together and represent uh, people age 50 and over with the goal to maintaining and improving their quality of life. So the network defends, promote their rights, celebrate their contribution to society and provides support with programs, services and leisure, cultural, sports and outdoor activities. So uh, I'm in charge of the governmental relation for our organization. To do so, I'm in touch with ministers, MPs at the, um, at the provincial and federal level. Um, we are a bottom-up organization, so we bring the claims of our members and try to convince the elected members of the parliament, as well as the civil servant, to take action that can improve um, the, the life of senior in Quebec. We make recommendations, like when we write a brief about a specific bill, we participate to any consultation on any subject that can touch seniors. We also take position in the media to bring attention on certain issues. For example, during the first and second wave of the pandemic, we were weekly in touch with the Minister of Senior, Marguerite Blais, and we were almost every day in the media. So as a result, we contribute to the return of caregiver and to the different senior housings. The government abolished the billing for certain services in private housing, like the delivering food uh, to the door of resident. And we also forced the federal government to offer a one-time payment through the old age uh, security. It, it was a small amount, but you know, we, we make pressure on them and they, 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 uh, they take action. In my presentation, I really want to bring the focus 
on demands that we make on the behalf of our member. Of course, uh, these are these are all priorities, but there's a numerous other demand. So the more important issue is a financial issue. Uh, we, we, our member talk about this every week, every day we receive calls, email, and uh, uh, our member, for a member, this is really the first one issue. So roughly 35% of the person age of 75 and older live with the 20 thousand uh, dollar or less annually if someone just have the old age security and the guarantee income supplement his income will be less than nineteen thousand dollar dollar for the old year the for us the the government must uh, the federal government must have a reflection about this um, of course, before the election, the government announced an increase of 10% for the old age security, but only for senior age 75 and older. It is a first step, but we have a, a problem with this. First, this measure, with this measure, the government create two classes of senior. That's a, a problem for us. Above all, the poverty does not discriminate on the basis of age. Uh, so last June, we launched a communication campaign in which we leave the floor to our, our members so they can talk about their financial situation and the uh, struggle to live uh, decently. Um, uh, also, in, in the last election, the government commit himself to increase the guarantee income supplement. Uh, for us, uh, it's sure that this engagement must be rapidly put in place. The senior want to live their retirement. They don't want to survive through their retirement. It doesn't make sense that numerous seniors still live under the, 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 un, under the poverty line in 2021. Um, another issue uh, that is really important for our member is the home care uh, services. We know, and the pandemic just increased increase that, we know that the majority of seniors want to stay as long as possible in their home. Unfortunately, because there is not enough public home care services, the seniors are often forced to move into a private senior residence to have access to these services. But the cost of the rent in these residence are highly prohibitive. It starts around uh, 2,000 uh, monthly. And 2,000 monthly, you don't have the old services to go with this, uh, this rent. Um, it is part important that the government uh, of Quebec increase the, their investments in home care. Actually, uh, Quebec invests 1.3 of their GDP in home care services. But the mean into the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development is 1.7% of GDP invested. So we have a, a, a long way to go to uh, have the equal investments. Also, the quality of the health care system is a major uh, preoccupation for seniors. Um, the pandemic showed that our systems our system with a breaking point. Before the pandemic, numerous cases of organized mistreatment were making headlines in the media. It is the symptom of a, of a system who doesn't have enough resources, or undergone successive reform and general under investments. We must increase the medical staff, promote the medical professions, increase student cohorts, decompartmentalize the health professions, and uh, encourage the return of experienced worker. Uh, actually, uh, about the experienced worker, we think they really can help with the uh, actual labor shortage. Uh, but to do so, we, we must uh, adequately protect them. And uh, they, they must have um, uh, financial incentive. Um, just 
to uh, to have an example uh, the the income the income replacement indemnity in case of a work accident uh, largely drop when the worker is age of 75 so uh, they they're more aged they're more risk at their job and if they are uh, if they have an accident uh, the, the the income replacement really drops. Uh, I think uh, past three year of uh, three or four year or, or to have this indemnity, uh, the uh, the indemnity is uh, completely cut. Cut. So uh, the the worker have to relate on uh, different other source of uh, revenue. Um, we think uh, board, both the government must encourage and not discourage experienced worker to keep working. So, uh, to first of all, the federal uh, uh, government must to must increase the uh, uh, the uh, exemption uh, of um, of annual employment and self employment income um, uh, because the. The beneficiary, the, the beneficiaries of a guarantee income supplement suffer from uh, important cuts when uh, they work. So, uh, to uh, for us, they have to uh, to make uh, exemption for uh, employment work and to uh, increase these en exemption. Also, to encourage uh, experienced worker board government. I have to put in place a uh, tax credit for uh, experienced worker. Um, ageism, social exclusion, and mistreatment also a worrying issue. Um, we witness numerous ages gesture toward the, the pandemic, especially in the first two wave. Um, but ageism is always, uh, I've, I've been always present. And uh, for an example, experienced worker are less likely to find a job and the, the, the prejudice to, toward the seniors are frequent. Uh, we think that also we think that seniors are not, are not enough uh, considering to the public issue. Um, moreover, uh, both government must, uh, uh, must put in place several uh, legislative modification to enhance the protection of seniors against mistreatment and abuse. There um, actually a bill presented by the government of Quebec to re-examine the act to fight mistreatment of senior. And uh, the Réseau FADOC uh, participate to the consultation. We, wa we were uh, uh, yesterday uh, in the, uh, in, uh, the parliamentary uh, consultation, we uh, we have uh, a discussion with minister and opposition. So uh, we we are really up hopeful about this process, but uh, we still need to 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 see uh, which changes uh, will be pr proposed at the end of the at the end of the day. So um, I, I want to thank you all for uh, listening to me, and I leave the floor to uh, my uh, my colleagues. Thank you so much, Philippe. We'll now turn to our next speaker, Mr. N. O.G. Mizrakazi. Mr. M. Mizrakazi is a former president of the Council for Black Aging Community of Montreal from 2018 to 2020, Montreal's largest English-speaking seniors organization established since 1986, and the author of Shards of Glass. He also sits on the Engaged Governing Board as the center's community representative. Welcome. Mr. Mizlakazi. Yes, T thank you. Pleasant good evening to one and all. The subject I'm presenting today is called the need for political activism by seniors for seniors. It is truly a privilege to be an older person rising early, decades of hustle and bustle to and from work, the inherent responsibilities and juggling that comes with having and raising a family, having to bundle up, trudge through snow, shovel out vehicles to go to work, are more or less a thing of the past. 
To be an older person is to be free to enjoy leisure. Do nothing. Do things at one's own pace. Pursue childhood dreams, walk new paths, rediscover self. There is liberation and empowerment in being an older person. Still, older persons inevitably find themselves having to reconcile with the long established accepted pronouncements. Better yet, myths about aging and the realities of aging. For many, aging as golden years, one of comfort, aging gracefully, reaching a ripe old age, and even age bringing reason, belie aging hydro-headed issues that affect pocketbooks, physical and mental health, quality of life, and the ability to maintain for as long as possible autonomy and independence at home. Those hydro-headed issues are precisely why I suggest the need for political activism by us. I know it's a tall order. After the voting, putting in 30 to 40 years of nonstop work, tiredness is to be expected. It's hard to recruit persons, ask them to dust off their battle fatigues and be engaged, no pun intended, with justified physical and or mental exhaustion. Not to mention being hobbled by health issues. Plus, some older persons took early retirement because they want to do absolutely nothing. Nonetheless, regardless of education, religion, politics, language group, race, ethnicity, stat status, class, gender identification, sexuality or health, older persons have aging and its inherent complexities as a common denominator, as a common challenge, verily a common foe. 17 years ago, December 2004, Statistics Canada released a report that stated, and I quote, Canada has changed from a high fertility society where women had many children during their lives to a low fertility society where women are having fewer children overall and at increasingly older ages, end quote. Predicted, with the current birth rate, in 25 years, the population of seniors 65 and older could be more than double the number of children under 15. Per a 2010 Canadian parliamentary report, and I quote, a birth rate that is below replacement level over the long term would make the government's current fiscal structure not sustainable. If it continues its downward trend, there would have to be a sharp rise in taxes and major cuts to government services, end quote. Major cuts could very well include pensions that is already a paltry sum. The last census data shows for the first time in Canadian history, there are more people over the age of 65 than they are under the age of 15. Where am I going with this, you might ask? As it stands, Canada do not have a sizable enough young and taxable population to ensure the needs of its ever increasing older citizens are going to be met. This should concern all of us. Taxes pay salaries. Tax dollars pay for services. Governments, towns, cities, municipalities need jobs, need workers, need a large tax base to fund, provide the financial resources to deliver services to adequately service the basic needs of the population. The lack of jobs cannot but engender fiscal restrictions and cuts to services, including those for seniors. We live in a global marketplace. What defines, what defines success in this arena? Competitiveness. In pursuit of same, governments secure free trade agreements and big business outsourced jobs. Aside from cheaper, not necessarily durable goods, globalization and outsourcing have been disastrous for Western economies. Entire labor intensive industries, millions of jobs were apportioned to countries with less developed economies, an abundant supply of cheap labor, and very weak to no worker and environmental protection laws. The result, employment scarcity, the lack of jobs at home, governments not having a large enough tax base to adequately service citizens. Is it any wonder municipalities have resorted to enacting numerous bylaws to facilitate tickets and fines, 
fines that have increased substantially. Factor in the proliferation of artificial intelligence, AI technologies, computerization, automation, innovative and information technologies and ancillary industries. For all the advantages, they are not job creators. They eliminate the need for human bodies. They eliminate jobs. Thanks to education, health science and nutrition, technologies, pharmaceutical companies, medical professionals and medicine, humankind are living longer lives. While that is all great and wonderful, it costs more to live longer. Aside from healthcare costs that keep rising, an annual inflation that takes a chunk out of one's pocket, longer lives mean a person can outlive their retirement savings. Given the travails that come with aging, long-term care might be inevitable, progeny, children might not be able to physically and or financially contribute to one's support or willing to do so. As study after study have shown, confirmed and reconfirmed, poverty rates among the elderly exceedingly high. Poverty impacts self-esteem. Poverty spur depression from self-isolation, social isolation, loneliness. As much as there are persons who enjoy being alone without being lonely, humankind is overwhelmingly social by nature. Humans have an innate need for company. Work and the socialization arising from its relatedness expose one to a wide and varied social network, having friends, company. One of the inevitable consequences of retirement is the factoring of bonds, reduction of one's social network, diminished or lost in touch with coworkers, acquaintances, even friends. The reduction of one's social network, when combined with illness or hospitalization of a spouse or life partner, bereavement, divorce or separation after 100 years, retirement unpreparedness, money problems, low pension payments, ill health, reduced mobility, pricing medication, feelings of worthlessness after a life of work, productivity and contribution can devastate financially, mentally and emotionally, precipitate self-isolation, social isolation and inevitably loneliness. Let me be clear. While social isolation and loneliness are often lumped together, there is a difference between isolation and loneliness. One can experience one and not the other. One can have lots of friends and acquaintances, close and strong connections, and still feel lonely. That aside, social isolation and loneliness impact health and well being. Loneliness is linked to increased mental health issues depression, alcohol and prescription drug abuse, personal care neglect, poor eating habits, increased risk of chronic health issues such as diabetes, and even early death. A British study found loneliness and social isolation were risk factors for coronary heart, and heart disease and stroke. Research shows Canada elderly population is growing increasingly lonely and isolated. As a society, as an age community, we ought not to. We cannot afford to sit and wait for the government to come up with strategies to improve the quality of life for older persons, combat social isolation, loneliness, minimize poverty. Older persons must be proactive. We must do our part. We must demand, not ask. We must hold the government and powers that be feet to the fire by political activism and working in tandem with other organizations. As Frederick Douglass informed in his 1857 speech, power concedes nothing without a demand. Consider, September 2019, the CAQ government announced 280 million for home care, in addition to the 1.5 billion the ministry purportedly spends annually. The COVID-19 pandemic exposed the many shortcomings in CHLSDs, failures known for years by staff, authorities, organizations whose clients are seniors and individuals. As far as I can tell, I might very well be wrong. I have never seen or read about the rollout and the application of those funds. Who will take the lead and demand the premier keep his promise? In unity, there is strength. 
If you haven't, join an organization or community to have or expand your social network. An organization can only be strong and dynamic as its members. However, far too often it is the unpaid officers and a few volunteers that shoulder responsibilities, working harder for free in retirement than when in a paid labor force. That can aggravate or trigger health issues or lead to burnout, which must affect the organization. Be active as possible in your respective organization. In closing, I say to you, the complexities of aging and its hydro-headed issues unites us. Only political activism can improve our lot, save us, allow us to live in dignity, truly age gracefully. My name is Anoshi Amzilikazi. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I'm really, I'm, um, would like, I'd like to introduce our next speaker, Ms. Ruth Pelletier. For close to 60 years, Ruth has been an activist and advocate for the less fortunate, both in her paid positions as well as her volunteer activities. She has held paid positions in geriatrics at the Verdun Protestant Hospital, Catholic, Catholic Community Services, the Canadian Continents Foundation, Alliance Quebec, and Consumer Advocacy. She has also been involved in work in advocacy, for instance, at the Ville de Marie Social Services. She's worked as a broadcaster with radio station CJD 800 Montreal, the television station CFCF, and as a weekly contributor on CBC's Home Run Radio. Ruth was a founding member, a member of the Greater Montreal Interpoverty Coordinating Committee, and this, was and this was the start of her volunteer involvements with NDG NDGCC elder abuse and Shadore, to name a few. With seniors, Action Quebec, Ruth has had the opportunity to bring the community together to submit their views on policymakers that matter, such as housing, health, financial issues facing uh, older adults, including age-friendly cities. Mental health concerns uh, for seniors continue to preoccupy Ruth as the need has dr drastically increased due to the pandemic, causing increased anxiety, social isolation, and depression. The floor is yours, Ruth. Thank you. Thank you so very, very much. And it's my pleasure to uh, be with you all today and I appreciate you taking the time. I would like to speak a bit about the contributions and challenges of our seniors. Uh, and I think the overall theme is value, valuing our seniors and ensuring we provide them with a decent standard of living filled with dignity, safety and respect. They have certainly earned it. I'd like to do a little bit about the background of seniors. Um, back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. And you may say, Ruth, why are you going so far back? Well, the 40s, that means the senior is about 81 years old today. So that's not that old. We have seniors that are living uh, well into their 90s. Their contributions were husbands and sons fought in the war. Women had many children to help with the, on the farm. Younger daughters received very little education because they stayed home and took care of the younger siblings. Sons who were too young to go to war worked on the farm. So life had its challenges. Also, it's important to remember that they did not have the conveniences that we have today. Vacuum cleaners, electric stoves, clothes dryers, lawn mowers. Few had a car and most people walked everywhere. But considering all that and how long it took to do the daily chores, they even found time to volunteer at their churches, their school, kids' school, or the gentlemen were volunteer firefighters. In 1966, Medicare was implemented, and prior to that, families virtually never went to a hospital. And if in the 50s or early 60s they needed to be hospitalized, it could easily bankrupt the family. I remember myself personally paying for a GP to deliver my first two children, and that was the mid-60s. Family allowance back then was known as the baby bonus and it began post-World War II. And guess what we got? We got between five and eight dollars per child until they were 16. I personally received six dollars a month per child. In 1988, a little sidebar, the Quebec government introduced the allowance for newborn children to be paid up to eight thousand dollars to a family after the birth of a child. So you can see how things have changed. There was no maternity benefits or daycares. Moms stayed home. 
That means most women over 80 do not have a Quebec pension plan. They didn't work and they didn't contribute. They receive the old age pension and today's basic monthly amount is $626.49. They can't live on that. They can apply for the guaranteed income supplement, but they must apply. The government doesn't look at your income tax return and automatically say, oh, there's a person who could use it. Back in the day, there were no senior residences. Women took care of their aging parents, their aging in-laws, and then their husbands. Generally, the husband passed away before the wife. So when I hear some people say, we don't need to worry about seniors, they have their monthly pensions. I do hope, and I take every opportunity to remind them that we remember these few facts. I could go on and on, but I'd also like to talk about the current situation and their needs. During the next quarter century, the population of Canadians over 65 will nearly double as the entire baby boom generation turns 65. By 2036, nearly one out of every four Canadian will be a senior, outnumbering children in the first time in history, Stats Canada 2010. Stress and anxiety is a, a concern of mine. The most common mental illness over 65 are mood and anxiety disorders, cognitive and mental disorders due to a medical condition, including dementia and delirium. Addictions, including prescription drugs and alcohol, gambling and psychotic disorders. Although considered common in older adults, mental illnesses should not be viewed as typical or ineventful, ineventable consequences of growing older. There are things that can be implemented to alleviate these conditions. We all know that healthcare is a number one priority for all Quebecers, but especially seniors. Recently, we have heard the serious shortages of nurses and how many are trying to find a GP or a specialist because their doctor is retiring as they age. We have heard about the mental health of our youth, midlife crises, but rarely have we heard much about seniors' mental health. There are several factors that have an impact on their health, mental health. Depression is the most common mental health problem in older adults. Estimated at, now this is interesting, 15% of those living in the community, but it goes up to 44% for people living in a residence in the long-term care home. Many are treated in long-term care facilities with tranquilizers, which increase the risk of cognitive and physical complications such as memory loss, poor balance, accidents, and falls. Anxiety affects five to 10% of those over 65. So you can imagine with COVID-19 what has happened to a lot of seniors. Phobias and panic attacks, therefore, causing some to become completely cut off and isolated. Once again, COVID has only increased this. The fear of becoming seriously ill, shut off from loved ones, what they were seeing on the news and what was going on with the CHSLDs. And if they were ill and waiting to be treated at the hospital and afraid to go, or the doctors weren't taking them, their anxiety only increased. As you get older, many suffer with chronic pain and lack of sleep, and therefore their health issues become more drastic and it affects their coping mechanism. As Philippe and Auger mentioned earlier, the limited financial resources prevent seniors from participating in organized activities Taking a membership with an organization limits their opportunities to build social networks. Poor housing option, options have a definite impact on one's health. Asbestos, old buildings, dust, dirt, lung disease. We saw in Montreal North how low-income families were packed together and the impact it had if one got ill with COVID. The overall impact of the cost of living or the increased cost of living on items such as nutrition, social participation, medication, oral health can be drastic for a senior. 
solutions. Governments need to take concrete actions to ensure that we have sufficient healthcare professionals working in all aspects of our healthcare system. Special attention needs to be given to the CHSLDs and private oh, senior cool. residences. This includes okay, lowering the ratio of... I'm, just... I'm sorry, somebody talking? Oh, Lindsay can be from here. This includes lowering the ratio of patients to staff, better working conditions to include adequate hours of employment and a competitive hourly wage. We should not have any senior so worried to enter these establishments that if they live there, they are putting themselves at risk. Ensure inspections and accreditation visits are truly a surprise, no warning, no phone call saying we're going to be coming Thursday at three o'clock. Safety and security, proper nutrition and cleanliness must be the absolute essential. Adequate monthly pension so individuals can live and not just exist. We have been talking about a guaranteed annual income for many decades. Perhaps it's time has come, but at a decent amount, because if not, we will continue to play catch up. Elderly poverty rates tend to be higher amongst women over 75 particularly widows, and because it's linked to employment history. The basic standard of living in Canada is $18,000 for a single person. 15% of elderly live in poverty. Another solution, encourage 20 to 30% of all new development designed to provide affordable housing for seniors and families. <laughs> Intergenerational projects work well for both sectors. More accessible and affordable housing is essential, and we need a variety of them, not one size fits all. Encourage governments to continue for as long as possible to expand its rebate programs to assist seniors to remain in their home if possible for as long as possible. It'll be cheaper on the system and the seniors will have a better quality of life. We need services such as painting, snow removal, grass cutting, outdoor work, pressure washing of terraces, et cetera. And if it's not feasible for a senior to remain in their home, then we must provide a safe, well-staffed home for our seniors. Time to change our culture. It should not be placing our senior. It should be moving to a different home with additional services to improve the quality of life for our seniors. Society, staff need to begin to look at it this way. Provide support tax rebates to adult children who take care of their parents and expand them. Index the old age cost of living. Just over a year ago, I received a big 61 cents. Next July, we're going to receive 10%, but only for 75 and over. Why? This amounts to approximately $744 annually. Yet we all know and experience rent, food, clothes, medication has all been increased. We appreciate the gesture, but once again, we're playing catch up. Increase the annual amount a senior is entitled to earn while receiving the guaranteed income supplement. I work very hard on the seniors committee with my MP to at least get us the $5,000, which is great, it's a, it's a benefit. But seniors will remain involved. They will be participating in society. Out of that, they will pay tax on it. And the money will go back into the economy because they're going to use it to replace appliances, buy winter boots, a winter coat, new glasses, dental work, and if they need any kind of medical apparatus, should they have any disability. Somebody did mention earlier, I'm not sure if it was fraud or OJ, fraud, uh, Philip or OJ, uh, fraud and abuse of all kinds. We must have tougher laws to enforce and bring scams and fraud under control. No form of abuse, physical, psychological, financial, has any place in our society. I feel that our seniors' self-esteem 
their finances and health can improve and it will certainly alleviate the depression and their quality of life will drastically improve. What are the benefits of addressing social isolation, anxiety, and depression? Cheaper on the healthcare system, less visits to the hospital, less workload on hospital staff, so less burnouts, improved quality of life for our seniors, benefit to families and society, less homelessness, crime, addictions, less aggressive behavioral issues. Hiring mature workers or volunteering provides a sense of contributing and making a difference. And my last words would be, think of your parents, a grandparent, a sibling, a dear friend, as we celebrate this international year of the older person. Those senior years come to us all and faster than we ever imagined. I salute all who came before me and I hope I will always remember what they did for us to make our lives better today. There is a lot that we must and can do. I wish our seniors better days ahead, stay safe, and I thank them. And I especially thank the senior volunteers. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ruth. I wanted to just encourage the uh, participants to please just drop any comments or questions that you may have for the panelists in the uh, chat box, just at the bottom of the screen. And now we'll turn to our final panelist, Ms. Yvonne Sam. Yvonne Sam, a retired head nurse and secondary school teacher, is the chair of the Rights and Freedom Committee at the Black Community Resource Center and board director of the Council for Black Aging. A regular columnist for over two decades with the Montreal Community Contact, her insightful and incursive articles on topics ranging from politics, human rights, and immigration to education and parenting have appeared in the Huffington Post, Montreal Gazette, CBC, Toronto Star, and the Guyanese Online. She's also the recipient of the Governor General of Canada Caring Canadian Citizen Award and the 2020 nominee for the Quebec Prix de la Justice. Thanks so much, Ms. Yvonne Sam, the floor is yours. Thank you everyone. And let me wish my fellow seniors happy International Day. I'm going to zero in on our good talk about the systemic obstacles that lead to social exclusion in older adults. But uh, before I get to that point, so let me, the, the theme for International Day for Older Persons is digital equity for all ages. All the people have made huge contributions to society through volunteer work, transmitting information and knowledge, and of course, helping their children with uh, care responsibilities. Before I get into the crux, let me define what social exclusion really is. It's a multi-dimensional process through which individual groups are excluded from facilities, benefits, and opportunities that others enjoy. Such exclusion only serves to reduce the opportunities to productively contribute to society. We are currently experiencing historical moments with unprecedented challenges brought on by COVID. Um, by COVID. Montreal's population is growing older and this is expected to accelerate over the next few years. According to Stats Canada, in 2016, there were 323,600 Montrealers aged 65 or over. By 2026, on Stats Canada, this figure will be around 465,800. Most seniors, unfortunately, in Montreal are women. And the elderly are among the most vulnerable groups. As I said before, the current pandemic has affected the situation disproportionately. There's a number of other factors that have also 
added to social exclusion. For example, we have limited social support for the elderly, ill health, access to transport has only served to make things even worse. The pandemic has served to exclude all adults from in-person contact with others in society. Um, the United Nations, the team focuses on digital equity. And we have got to make sure that all adults are considered if we try to fulfill this team. The all adults are less likely to take advantage of opportunities for some of the reasons I've already highlighted. Smartphones, tablets, and high-speed net sources are not exactly things that they're readily able to access or they're knowledgeable about. They also lack the, I would say the help and assistance, not the technology only, we wish to use video chat apps to watch connect with people, thereby avoiding social exclusion. They, they lack the skills, physical or as they, also as they age, physical and cognitive limitations may prevent seniors, especially in long-term care facilities, from being able to use communication technologies on their own without any form of assistance from others. This non-participation further aggravates the situation during the times as such when physical distancing has become imperative. Another fact is that most of the tech-savvy people who can assist the seniors for example, in the stores, helplines, are young people who are impatient with the older adults or they speed through the process with, um, with sort of high-tech explanations that the senior cannot grasp or know how to make use of it. We have, this has got to be addressed. There are, senior, there are some seniors who are quite able to make use of information technology, communication devices, except that they are not being given the opportunity for sale in the sense that the government has made a focus of their, I would say not their mandate for sale, but make a part of their, their right to respect to, to the older persons. So that, so that they can make a meaningful participation and thereby live up to the team of the United Nations International Day of Older Persons. Digital, digital, we live in a digital age and digital equity is necessary for access for everything. Whatever, whatever we're dealing with out there, it's all being done by computer. Thereby we have to equip our, our seniors, those who are able and those who are capable with the necessary tools to be able to function and participate in a productive society. Now is the time, now is the time to bring technology to the entire aging population. And we should, I, I'm going to borrow a bit from um, the, the former speaker, Mr. Enoji, that we need to hold our members of parliament, our appointed ministers, hold their, their feet to the fire or to the flame so that they, they make it. The, the need is increasing, it's not disappearing, it's increasing. All the adults can learn technology, but it must be adapted for them and made accessible. If not, social exclusion and loneliness are going to become in the, in the, long, in the short run a major risk factor that will affect the health, the health outcome so while we fight the pandemic, or we, maybe when we conquer the pandemic, we'll have another one to fight. So we need to bring this or keep this in the, on the front burner. It doesn't disappear. Awareness must be raised, must be raised of the medical and health impact of social isolation and exclusion. 
among our older adults. It must be addressed. And the healthcare system or missing health, it must start from now, from now to begin the process of developing methods to counteract, to identify and counteract the, the social exclusion in older adults. We cannot allow, we, we, well, I, I would say we must not allow the older person to slip into oblivion in the manner in which it's, it's taking place. We, we cannot allow that. We, we must make technology accessible to them. We must make those who teach them the technology accessible to them also. And whatever factor may hinder them from, getting, from get, making this possible, we should address. If not, we perpetually live in a, in a province of crisis, we, we, one after the other. We, the young people, should be, we, we should appeal to them that if they're the ones who are going to bring their knowledge to the older adult, that they do so in a manner which they can understand and which they can gain the benefit from. If that, if that means changing their style, if that means also um, <laughs> bring it, making them aware and so that they can modify the, the modus operandi, then, then so be it. We can't allow, as I said before, we cannot allow old adults to go the way things are going. So I asked, uh, well, I asked this International Day of the Seniors and the team being digital equity for all ages be observed, be remembered, and be followed, be followed um, so that the elderly or the old adult can make a meaningful participation in our society, which is already in disarray, and they can do so. Thank you all for listening. Do have a pleasant rest of the International Day for Old Persons. Thank you so much, Ms. Sam. So we'll now turn the um, we'll turn uh, away from the presentations and towards a question and answer period. And I'm going to uh, invite all of our panelists to unmute themselves and um, open up their videos and uh, to uh, start the, um, uh, the the start to start this period. Oops, Malkazi. Welcome, Philippe. I wanted to encourage everyone to pose their questions in the answer uh, in the chat box below. And while we're waiting for um, as the, as the questions start coming in, I'll get Ruth here too. Add Ruth. There we go. There we are. Um, as we're waiting for the questions to come in, I uh, I thought I would could maybe just begin by posing a, a rather large question to each of you. Um, sort of, uh, well, first of all, thank you for your incredible, uh, informative, and fiery presentations, and for joining us again in the celebration of International Day of the Older Person. Um, and so, in light of the sort of celebratory nature of this panel and of the day, I wanted to. Uh, I was hearing each of your unique um, presentations, I wanted to pose to each of the panelists, um, what does the day mean for you? If you are an older person, what does the day mean for you? And, and if you're not, then also you, you, you know, feel free to respond to that question. And maybe I'll also pose this question to the audience as well. Um, feel free to just drop your answers into the, into the chat. Uh, does someone wanna get us started? I know it's always hard to go first. <laughs> <laughs> I am okay. I I um what the day means to me. Not I'm not going to say the day, the team. I I I'm I was as I was pondering on the as I wrote, I think we needed to particularly the part that I spoke about with the young people who are tasked with teaching the seniors. If they can perhaps listen to what we have to say, because I, I know that um, I, I, was, I had to get some teaching, some tuition from my younger son. <laughs> I could tell you it was no walk in the park <laughs> because they, 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 they come over you and they fix it, they fix the problem. You don't even know, you, you, not most 
time taken to say, well, you do this, then you can move that over there, then you take this here, you put that, in. oh, no, 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 no. That time is not there. So I, I, I saw it as an opportunity to, to bring this awareness to somebody because there's a lot of seniors who want to learn, but unfortunately, the teacher is not the, 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 the mismarriage between teacher and student. And that, need, that needs to be addressed because not everyone can teach. The older adult is not going to learn in the same manner as, as the young adult of that. So we need to bring this message home to the young ones. If technology is the, if technological communication is the face of the future, then we've got to be very careful who takes into the future and how they take us into the future. Excellent. I'll just say that I'll play. Um, I'm hoping this will kind of be an open, more flowing discussion. I'll just pose that one question and then um, lob it to the to the panelists. Thank you so much, uh, Miss Sam. Um, for uh, our part, I think the the October first is uh, an occasion to pay homage of uh, our seniors. They they build the the country, they build the province. It's because of them that uh, we are uh, where we are. But as an organization, we also use the uh, October first as a way to uh, bring the focus on the issue uh, with. Uh, in which uh, seniors struggle. So uh, I talk uh, about many issues, but uh, we, we, we take uh, sometimes the top issue and uh, when we are on the media, like um, we have an invitation on the uh, first radio CBC uh, today. So of course we talk about uh, some issue that uh, uh, seniors struggle with. It's, it's always an, an occasion to talk about that. Thank you, Philippe. <laughs> Why should I hold you laugh? If I might, I would say that we have made so many advances in many areas, but as I look at it overall, there's still so many challenges that we have to address. And, um, you know, it's direct services that many good organizations are providing to seniors and to society. Uh, but we have to have the participation and the understanding and the goodwill of the politicians to ensure that the policies change. Uh, and like Philip, um, I, I feel a strong attachment to uh, older seniors. <laughs> I'm getting there myself, but uh, even the ones that are older and, and my grandmother and my, my aunts and uncles and my mother who came before me. Um, so I, I, I look at it as a celebration and many organizations do celebrate and uh, awards and what seniors have contributed, but I don't want to forget that there's still a lot of work to be done. And COVID has hampered that to a degree because there's no way I would be sitting in my condo uh, with what went on with the long-term care facilities. I would be out organizing demonstrations. Um, and I, I don't plan to let it go in the back burner either, even once it's safe to get out and uh, advocate. Um, so that's my view for today. Oh, I never thought I would get old. I never thought I would get old. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that, I'm not saying I expected to live a short life. It's just that aging was non-existent in my daily living. For I always felt that I had uh, valleys to explore and mountains to climb, you know, and that philosophical outlook, it didn't lend itself to thinking about aging, right? In fact, even up into my late 50s, when people inquire how as to my age, I would say 17 and a half, right? I, I love the half bit, you know, I was perennially 17 and a half, wide eye, bushy tail, and raring to go. After numerous attempts at conversion, quote unquote conversion, I was dragged, kicking and screaming in 2016 to the Black Council of Aging by a young lady aged 77 or thereabouts, and it changed my life. It is my belief that learning, knowledge, institutional history and institutional knowledge 
are indispensable to best serve and advance an organization. So as a member of the Council for Black Aging, as a board member, then its president, you know, I give my heart and soul to understand, to know as much as possible about aging and continues to do so. So just from that wellspring of research, study, acquired knowledge, experience, and anecdotal evidence, I can I speak on, on, on things. So in retrospect and looking back at this anniversary day to day, it is so vitally important. But I think more importantly, we need for people, the schools, the school level, like let's say at CJEP to be taught about aging so they could approach it differently and think about it differently because aging is an inescapable aspect of our life. And many of us are unprepared for it. And again, in living longer lives, the challenges ahead of us, I mean, it's scary. Thank you so much, Energy. I, I, oh. I, I have, sorry, I have a question to ask. It's not a question, sorry. I, let me rephrase that. Something that has always worried me in my strange um, bifurcated cranium. Every year, the National Year from since to since stack it up, come forward with a team, bring the team forward. Like, for example, digital FP for all ages. Who assures that the teams are followed instead of celebrating the day? And uh, October 1st, who ensures that the team is followed or the team is addressed? Let's say like next year. Next year, we will be celebrating a different team. Where can I look back to see, was the team adopted? What problems have been made in certain areas? Where can I look back? I mean, there have been several teams before. Who, is, who looks back and say, you know, we have this achieve that next year where can I look or where would I where where should I be looking to see that the team was taken up by let's say any international any country say well in Canada the team was called you know they did this or they opened that or whatever you as opposed to just a plain celebration of a day If, if I may, I believe the teams are just guidelines, but you can adjust it to your environment, whatever you choose to do in your manner of celebration of that day, of observance of that day. Okay, additional equity all ages. Well, I brought forward the fact that all the persons should have access because of the systemic obstacles that they would face. Where will I look next year to say that I've adapted it, as you said, I've adapted it? Yes, yeah, sure. Every country has adapted differently. But some countries don't have facilities to adapt it as readily or in the manner which maybe Canada has as opposed to a third world country. But I'm saying next year, when it, when it comes up, where would, where would, the, where would the, any progress made or anyone who took it up and effected it, where would I, where would I even see that? Rather than just be a day when we highlighted the, the, the team, when we celebrated the day, as opposed to affecting the team in any way, shape, or form. I think one thing you can do, Yvonne, is that many organizations have uh, newsletters and you can be put on their mailing list because I received many, many uh, invitations to do something today and participate. Um, so, you know, I would strongly suggest people get involved with an organization in their community and get on mailing lists and you will see what team. each one is doing. Team, I'm talking about the team, the team, the team. Well, the theme, the, team. the theme is what the organizations make, make of it. And that depends on the, the input and the feed feeding in that seniors who are participating, give them. I wanted to just uh, refer us to the, the chat box. We have an, a comment here. Um, it's just saying, just uh, championing your point, uh, Miss Sam, these are very, very important questions that it's important to have actions following the themes so that we can really celebrate the advancements. Yes, yes. Um, so not just 
from my, to you know to, to so I'm understanding it's not just having themes but actually having concrete material that, that those actions around those themes have concrete material results. effects and results and how do we you know that we can account for a year from now we can look back and we can see the impact is that that's um I take your point just to expand, just to expand on that, while that sounds good, next year the team will be different. If it is that you're given the team a year in advance, then now you can look at measurable outcomes for those teams in that organizations can put that action plan into play. And then at that particular date, or let's say October the 1st next year, if you know what the team is, you can see whether or not there are identifiable outcomes and measurable outcomes. So even if you do that follow up now, next year the team changes. Wait, no, 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 second. don't get it wrong. I'm not talking about follow up. I'm saying this is international day. I'm saying not necessarily can the police don't, all my job to say, country have taken up team, not necessarily today's team, even though this year's team, previous teams. Where have we gone with that? No. That's, 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 that's just, if I, I, I think we have some audience who have questions. Sure, we can turn to the first audience, audience questions that kind of touches on a point that um, Enoji uh, spoke to a little bit earlier. And I'm just gonna pull it up. Um, this person says that I'm very curious, the term senior or older person or aging person, these ter uh, terms of reference to categorize us are really, uh, as uh, really as we really get older, there is not one term I've heard of that all older people ref prefer as a category. What do you think of all of these terms? Do you have a preference and why? Well, most organizations today are saying that anybody over 55 uh, can participate in seniors organizations and activities. For the simple reason, I do believe that they're trying to attract the adult children off an older senior and also somebody who's about 55 should have, and if they haven't, they are beginning to look at retirement and what they're going to need and they want to have some input into ensuring that services and things will be in place for when they hit 65, 70. That's the best answer I can give you. I have an issue with the term older person because older person could mean anything. I think that senior is more appropriate. I find that older person to be a bland expression. That's just my personal view on it. Mm -hmm. Because if you speak of a senior, then you automatically have an image in your head of, as compared to saying an older person. And some people refer to it as seniors or elders. Um, I have no problem with either term. We uh, really use a senior term uh, in organization and organization also uh, welcome everybody uh, from uh, 50. Uh, uh, so uh, it's kind of a, you know, it's a network. We, we want to bring together people. It's, and uh, we have a actual uh, uh, media campaign in which we are uh, making fun of, of this age show. So we, we, we just, um, the, the main message is uh, show your age. You don't have to be shy about your age uh, and uh, you're welcome in FADOC. So uh, it, it's not because it's, it's just a number. So uh, we, we have to participate. We have to be uh, 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 in the whole society. Uh, there's a lot of volunteer in our clubs. And uh, it, it's because of them that our network is so uh, alive. So uh, uh, to us, uh, it, it's just a number. So uh, it's, uh, it doesn't show anything <laughs> else. Age, age has always been a problem um, for some people. And if we if we were to, and I'm, I don't have any um, part in it, United Nations had run some problems with that. And they define old, old as 60 and over for coming from that. And then we move it down to 65 because that was the age at which most is 
most health illnesses became prominent. But I, I, I don't have I don't have a problem with being a senior or being a thing because people will discuss their age and they look well for it. They look and people tell me, oh you look you look good for age. They'll they'll they they'll disclose their age and they don't take anything whether it be senior or whatever. But if they don't well for the age, you want some problems there. They don't want to be called a senior, they don't want to be called old, they just want to be just left. If they look good, especially, especially as the Montreal aging population is mostly women. So you run into some very serious territory there when you ask your age, if you, because you always wonder, firstly, why are you asking? Why are you asking? But if she told by few people, oh, you look good for your age, I couldn't believe you were that age. She was, she was, <laughs> she was so sad to tell you, we don't even ask you to tell you, I'm 66 and old, I'm 69 and old, I'm 72, she'll tell you. Thank you, Miss Sam. Um, I'm just noticing that a couple of people have their hands up, and I'm just I'm wondering if you could just wouldn't mind dropping your comments or your questions just in the chat box. Um, we have a number of questions that are coming in, a number of comments that are coming in. I'm trying to get through them in the kind of in the order in which we're receiving them. Um, the, I have another question for the the panelists. Um, the question is. What is so? This sort of a question comes out of um, some themes that came out of Philippe's talk and the talks of others as well. Specifically, what incentives and training may we give to younger people and society as a whole to provide digital learning for seniors who need it? Um, for uh, our part, we we try to. Uh, to, to, to participate to the numeric literacy of a senior. So uh, we, we, we uh, do, um, we do uh, working, uh, we do, uh, we call that the uh, atelier FADOC. So uh, it, it's, it can be just to use a, 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 a tablet, a iPad, it's, it can be to use a, a PC or anything else, but uh, for us, it is important to, to, to try to, to, to encourage that. So, but also there, there's num numerous issue uh, that's, uh, that, that, that can be solved by our government. We know that uh, the, uh, the uh, internet services are not uh, good uh, everywhere. Uh, some people don't, don't doesn't have the access and also uh, must service are uh, highly costly. We 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 may, we make pressure to the government to 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 have more access, uh, uh, financial access to these services. Uh, so uh, it's a multi uh, angle uh, issue. I can tell you that I worked on a project um, for a year under New Horizons, which was teenagers, teenagers and technology. And uh, I outreached to the English Montreal School Board. You can do it with any school board. And it uh, was high school classes and the Rosemount Technology um, School also came and came uh, participated. We had nine different schools. And um, a lot of the teachers are very, um, pro uh, having their students involved, what they call community engagement. Uh, so we, in these schools, the area, the territory they were covering, we announced it and seniors who needed help registered, they brought their own laptop, their own iPhone and, uh, iPhone and a cell phone, it wasn't always iPhones, and um, uh, iPads. And whatever their questions or needs were, a student, they were one-on-one -on -one and the student helped them with it. It was marvelous because there was a lady in the islands who hadn't seen her sister for years. And she learned how to do FaceTime and got to see her. I mean, she was dancing around the, the school gym. Uh, another one, uh, she was completely deaf. Her son bought her a cell phone and the instructions he sent was, please teach my mother how to text. So they text the, the son who was at work and he responded and they were having a conversation. It was the best conversation that they had had. But like Philip said, 
A lot of residences don't have a common area where there is Wi-Fi for those seniors who do not have the budget to pay for Wi-Fi. Uh, a lot of organizations did uh, do um, fundraising and did do donations of iPads during COVID so that people who could have access could see family members that way. There's a big need. The federal government has got a plan on the books to try and lower the costs of uh, internet service. Uh, but in some regions, because we have rural communities, we're still dealing with dial-up dial and services are cutting off. Uh, and um, you know, not every senior can afford the equipment, uh, let alone have access to a, a place to get it. Libraries are good. That's a good solution where they can go. The Atwater Library certainly does provide courses, and I think St. Uh, Thomas More Institute, to name a couple. Um, but but it is a challenge. But there there can be uh, solutions for it. Is, is the certain need, at least from my standpoint, intergenerational meetings and encounters. They how we have this meeting here. I see. I, I'm. This is just my my two bits. I see a strong need. For us to invite some young people next year, part of just just an idea, so they can hear from the so let's say from seniors' mouth, they can hear exactly what our concerns as as it applies to them, applies to them. There's so many for intergenerational, intergenerational. There's many homes with seniors with grandparents who are, who are glad to are glad um to learn who who, who having access to the um. The Wi-Fi that is no problem. The, and the, and the equipment is not but what the teacher gain is what is hindering them. Do we need to bring this? I mean, beyond the home, do we need to bring this to the government? Do we need to bring this to the government's awareness or our local ministers to find that there's some facts beyond the, the the teaching part that there are many things out there who need to who are willing to learn or who are ready to learn, who are prepared to learn or master technology, or these are the factors that are hindering them. These are factors that will eventually lead, that have led to social exclusion, they eventually lead to a greater problem. Can we, can we sit down and discuss this and see what plans you have that would make the team of United Nations 2021 come to fruition? And Andy, would you like to add anything? No, no, um, Ruth said it best, you know, this is what we need to do, you know, liaise with the schools and you can have that sort of information technology exchange intergenerational thing, you know, if more organizations do that, then you can have your membership, you know, get that technological knowledge to assist themselves. We just have a, a, a thematic comment in the in the chat. Uh, this person says, I'm a youngish person. We are here and we are listening. We love to hear from you and we love to have your feedback. And there's actually another comment just above it that I'm also a young uh, person with a with a smiley face. Um, I'm, there's quite a few questions coming in here. So I'm gonna, uh, if it's okay with the panelists, I'll move to the, 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 next, the next question. Uh, this question asks, as someone looking to do community outreach to older adults, what advice would you have with regards to the need to have programs focused on health and wellness as well? Does governmental assistance exist for the prevention of chronic disease? Well, I, I certainly would be very comfortable in answering, um, you know, people, how can they re re uh, do outreach with seniors? Uh, seniors Action Quebec had a marvelous three-year project under um, uh, Employment Skills and Development uh, Canada Federal Grant. And uh, it was to address social isolation and how did you find seniors who were socially isolated? And we had approximately five partners. We uh, did worked with the... Um, Canadian, African Canadian Prevention Development Network, the Black Community in Montreal, Gaspé, uh, Cote Nor, which is Bay Como Cetil, and I'm trying to trying to remember the other one. It might have been Udaway. I'm forgetting right at the moment. 
uh, anyway, there's some serious, there's, there's concerns. You can't just, you know, because I want to do good, just go and do it. Um, I think there has to be parameters in which everybody is very aware of. Uh, we did not, and we had the project, we hired some people. Uh, volunteers were trained. Uh, volunteers were given a police check because uh, they were going to people's doors. You wanted to know who was approaching seniors. Um, you can, easy ways is if you have a connection with your local church, you have a connection with an organization in your community, perhaps the CLSC, and you could tell them that you're interested. But I would strongly suggest the best way to do this kind of work is to join an organization, a, a duly official organization, not just go off as, as a person, unless you want to act as a neighbor and you start having a chat and you, you, you know, you, you get to know the person um, because, uh, you know, you can go into Tim's or McDonald's when it's safe and you'll see a cluster of them gathering together. That's their social uh, outing. Um, some organizations even years ago uh, would make a casserole and show up at supper time and say, I've made a casserole, I'm all by myself. Uh, would you mind if we shared it? Uh, some people make connections at the park with a, a, a dog, a pet. Uh, so it's very gentle because that senior has got to learn to trust you, got to know who you are, and you also have to protect yourself uh, as well. Um, so I, I would strongly suggest that the first thing is get connected with an organization and find out what is the best way. And there are government programs that funding can be made available, but it's done through organizations, not individuals. That would be my word of caution. And, and, and be friendly neighbors. Help somebody put the garbage out. Help them up the stairs. If you're strong and healthy and you can shovel those steps in the winter. Those kinds of things have value. I can agree more with, uh, with you, Ruth. <laughs> I think it's the first step, uh, of course. Uh, um, if there is, isn't volunteers, there is uh, many organ local organization that will be uh, just swipe off the map. Uh, and uh, it, senior can also implicate themselves at the uh, municipality uh, yeah. uh, council. Uh, so there's many ways to, uh, to imply and uh, it's, uh, uh, and I volunteer, is... and you know what? I get as much back as what I ever give out. Yeah. It, it's a great sense of well-being. As I'm, I'm shut in here because of COVID and, and health concerns, and it has been my saving grace. It has kept me, and my kids might say, relatively sane mother. <laughs> there, There's many persons who say to me, I, I didn't need an agenda for my whole career. And, that, and now that I'm retired, I need an agenda. <laughs> so there's plenty of way to imply uh, yourself. yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just noting the time and we're actually a little bit over time. <laughs> Thank you, Ruth. That's a, uh, that's a calendar. <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately, we weren't able to get to uh, a number of questions and comments uh, in, the, in the chat box. Um, so I apologize uh, for that. Uh, I wanted to just invite um, any of the panelists to say some final words, or if there's a question that um, you specifically would really like to respond to, to do so. Um, we just have probably about a minute uh, or two left before um, we'll, we'll end the panel. I would like to say that I'm as far away as an email, and I was going to try to type it in. I'm not very fast. My email is ruthkathleenpelche at gmail.com. And uh, that's the best way to get me. And if you still have questions, if I can, I will answer. Thank you, Ruth. I, I just want to say thanks to everyone. Uh, also, uh, thank you for engaged for the uh, invitation. It's always a pleasure to uh, 
to uh, be there to explain uh, what we can uh, do as an organization and uh, uh, also uh, happy first october to everyone it's an important day yeah it has been fun yeah thank yes. you Louise. i would like to say only political activism would improve our lot save us allow us to live in dignity and truly age gracefully thank you you and I have to talk. <laughs> Miss Sam. What can I say? Except that I, let me let me conclude by saying I hope, sincerely hope, that what was said today in in totality will be taken by somebody out there so they can reach maturity. Whether it be an organization, whether it be an individual, whether it be a young one, whether it be an old one like ourselves, that all was all was said today in totality would eventually be taken seriously so they can reach maturity. We're all going to get there, and the alternative is not what we want. <laughs> So, um, so this concludes our panel. I want to thank each of the panelists for, of course, accepting this invitation to speak for each of your uh, presentations, for the time you've put into them, for the opportunity today to have learned so much uh, from you um, and for offering your invaluable perspectives and just for your generosity. So thank you to um, all four of you. I also want to thank each of the audience members for their presence and their participation in today's uh, panel and for, and for being with us. If you're generally interested in staying up to date on the activities and the events that are hosted by the center, I invite you to join our newsletter or to follow us on Twitter. And with that, um, happy International Day of the Older Person, everyone, and take good care. Thanks. Thank so you. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye.